fish. Nice to have you with us. Sitting here thinking about Henry Hall. Henry Hall. When I met Henry, he was 80 years old. He lived in Baltimore, just off Jordan Hill Park, at a townhouse that he had been in for many years. He'd lost his wife a few years earlier and was looking to uh, place his fish collection in an appropriate facility. I heard about him from a friend, Rick Hahn, at the Catoctin Zoological Park in Thurmont, Maryland. He had been in touch and found that he was not in a position to do anything to help. Well, I was on the board of directors of the, the founding board of the National Aquarium, and we were looking for ways to promote the facility before construction began. So I took it upon myself to go visit Mr. Hall. He was a big man, about six foot four, 250 pounds easily, solid, rock solid. He had been an engineer, what's called a stationary engineer, which meant he ran, in his case, the, the physical plant at the old Mercy Hospital in Baltimore ran the heating, air conditioning, and power systems. So he knew his way around and had been at a position of some responsibility long retired he had been keeping fish all his life something he began when he was a boy much like me <laughs> in fact now i think about it i'm the age now that henry was when i met him that's a little shocking this was about 1980, I guess, maybe earlier, 78, when I met Henry Hall. Yeah, about 78. As I said, before construction started on the new aquarium, so I may have my years off. may have been a bit earlier. I'll have to look that up and make corrections in any case. I called up Mr. Hall and he invited me to his home, which I accepted. Walked into his very nice home and he took me down to the basement. Well, I got about five steps down and I looked and what I saw took my breath away. There were probably 40 aquariums in his basement, none of which were under 100 gallons. 40 very large tanks. Very neatly organized, stacked when possible, filling rows all around the outside of the walls and at least one aisle, as I recall. And in each aquarium was 
a single fish. One fish per hundred, I think the largest tank was about 250 gallons. One fish per tank. Everything you could possibly imagine in monster fish grown large. Well, I was stunned. He showed me around. We looked at everything. And he told me that he needed to move it on. He needed to donate his entire collection. I spoke to the chairman of the board of the National Aquarium and he allowed us how he thought this was appropriate. So we got a crew from the city to come over and help move these tanks. Well, Henry Hall showed them all up. These big, burly men couldn't pick up the big tanks. So Mr. Hall showed them how to rock it off the stand, tip it to the floor, and walk it out the door, single-handed. They were stunned. We kept one large tank because Henry wanted a couple of fish that he had never had. He wanted an arapaima and he wanted a paddlefish. We were able to get the arapaima. We never got a paddlefish. It wasn't until years later that I was able to acquire a couple of paddlefish and it's still a fish that I long to find a resource for today. Henry Hall. We moved those tanks into a display on Pier 5 where the aquarium was to be built. The city put a big tent up like a circus tent and the, the uh, I don't know what department it was, built a series of stands for the aquariums made out of three-inch pipe, galvanized pipe. It was all welded. I think I still have a few of them. The tanks sat on them, and then they they did front front pieces in each of the tanks, so it was really quite a very nice display. <clears throat> this is right around the time of the Baltimore City Fair, so it was shown off at the City Fair. Thousands of people had a chance to see Henry Hall's wonderful fish. After the fair, we donated everything to the Baltimore Science Museum, and they in turn created a very, very nice, sophisticated display for Henry's fish, which later became a substantial part of the Science Museum, featuring Maryland fish. Henry and I would travel around. He would call me up and say, let's go fishing. <laughs> so, sure. He'd come over and pick me up or I'd go pick him up. And we would go to visit all of the tropical fish stores in the area. We went as far as D.C., Washington, D.C. We went up into, into Pennsylvania. Never got to New Jersey. All over Baltimore, of course. 
just visited wonderful shops and always bought fish. In the meantime, he had helped me put together a display of fish in the church I was serving. In the social hall, we had about 25 aquariums, some of them pretty large, lining the walls with lots of fish in them. What a joyous time. Henry became ill, developed adhesions from which he did not recover. So while a year before that, I had the distinct joy of performing a marriage ceremony between Henry and his then new wife, Regina was her name. She had never been married. She was in her mid-70s. Henry was 80. We had a wedding. We had a party. And she lost him within a year. So sad. Henry Hall. Before he died, I took him to meet the board of directors of the National Aquarium. And they honored him by by um, bringing him on the board as a board member and then later creating a, a scholarship for young men and women to learn stationary engineering which of course is a very substantial part of any public aquarium he never got to see the aquarium. He, he died before it opened. But I know he would have been thrilled. And some of his fish are still there. We had a, a, a school of piranha, red belly piranha, which are now enormous and are in the Baltimore Aquarium. Go visit them sometime. Well, this is Father Fish just reminiscing about old friends. Nice to see you today. Bye-bye. Thanks for plugging in and watching and being a part of this channel and this series of videos. found something you've never seen before. Have a great day. Nice to have you with us. Come on back.